Okay, uh, here we go. We are with Mr. Vincent. We are still on uh, 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 Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Where are we at now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm amazed that I could think of it because I feel like I got about two hours of sleep last night. But uh, we're, we, we got through three songs of Pepper's last time, and uh, we're hitting, uh, fixing a, a hole. And um, actually, if I look at the song list, this is really such a McCartney album. We started out with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, McCartney. With a little help my, from my friends, that sounds like McCartney. It's just cute, you know, and he tends to lean toward the cute. Then we have a Lennon song, Lucy in the Sky. Now after this, we have Getting Better, Fixing a Hole, She's Leaving Home. Right in a row, that's all McCartney. All right? So in any case, yeah, I thought we were doing Fixing a Hole. We are doing Getting Better. Okay. Getting Better is a really simple song. But it's, it's, again, really well constructed. Um, starts off with the changing. And what that is, it's an F chord with an added ninth. That's an F chord with a G note in it. And why is it called a ninth? Well, if I count up the scale steps from F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the ninth note off, off the F Lydian scale. And it's way up here in the octave. And then it goes back down All right. to a C chord. We're in the key of C. It's, this is basically a 1-4-5. This is a very simple song. But again, it's so well crafted that um, he keeps the listener's interest, you know. Um, and again, we have uh, Harrison experimenting with, you know, uh, uh, tech guitar textures. That sound... I don't know how they got the sound they got, but they got it, and it's it's a cool tone. It's a very cool tone. And it's McCartney. Uh, it's a it's Harrison again experimenting to the fullest. Mm -hmm. uh, he's getting not as Harrison is getting not as innovative as he was say on Revolver because he's he's developing more interest in the sitar now and he's kind of getting away from the guitar. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, we have it's the song starts with the chorus, which is unusual. Alright, um, so, I remember I told you there are some songs that don't start on the root chord, the home chord, this is one of them, it starts on the F, not the C, okay. songs in C. Um, the chords that, that, that sit inside of a key, okay, um, they each have their own gravitational weight, and some, are, some chords are stronger than others to pull back home. In, in a particular, in, like when you're thinking of the major chords in a key, uh, let's look at C. We have C, D, E, F, uh, D, C, D, E, F, G. Five steps later we have G, right? G major chord, and uh, that's also a strong, as, as C is the strongest chord in the key of C, but G is the secondary strongest chord in the major world, in okay. the major, they each have their little sister minor chords as well, all right, and they, th those three have their strengths too, yeah, I hope I'm being clear. No, 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 that's okay. All right, so what, what I'm trying to say here is that a composer, you can use a device, let's say that I have a song, I'll, I'll do it right now, okay? Let's say I have a song, it's going uh, C to G to F to C, right? Now I'm going to go up to the second chord of the key of C, D minor, I'm going to sit there for a while. So this is precisely what happens in, in It's Getting Better. We start off, um, well actually he doesn't announce the C chord, 
All right, but we have the F and the G. Da, 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 da. For all intents and purposes, this is the root chord. It could be G mixed Lydia. Right? Da, 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 da. It could end there. All right, could be the ending chord, but da, 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 da. So he's creating two roots, all right, without modulating, which is a kind of cool little device, huh. and it's not used that much okay. in songwriting. But basically, again, you lean on a chord enough. There's a demonstration. Actually, I've, I don't know if this would actually work on, on film, but I'd like to actually try this demonstration, okay? Okay. This is a demonstration about the brain and how it perceives root. Now, some people don't perceive root at all. They have a bad sense of root. I had, I had actually a very intelligent guitar student who couldn't hear root. Oh. And so he was into this very abstract atonal music because root didn't matter to him. It was very strange. Odd, odd character, this guy. Anyway, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same chord progression exactly the same way twice in a row. All right. Except before each one, I'm going to establish a root in our mind. The chord progression is going to be C, D minor, F and G. And already we're hearing C as the root. Comes home to C. Right. So I'm going C, D minor, F, G, C. Now I'm going to end. And I end on C. And you can feel it relax on C. Right. But now I'm going to talk for a minute. By playing these scales, what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a D root, all right? Now, D minor is a chord in this progression. All right? Same exact chord progression played twice in a row. The first time our ear went to C, this time our ear went to D minor. Right. So what was it that made that happen? All right? This is a demonstration I like to use. This is the mystery of root. If I sit here and talk long enough and I play some arbitrary chord, the brain latches onto that chord and says, this must be home. Yeah. Okay? And because of that fact, a composer can really play with people's ears, like McCartney does in this song, where we're temporarily in G Mixolydian, and then suddenly we're in C Ionian, and, and, and both are kind of like opposite key, not opposite keys, but, you know, a certain distance away, and yet he manages to get our ear to believe that G is a root for a while, and then it, get our ear to believe that C is a root. For right. A while. So in a simple little piece of music like this, is, there's actually something going on. So, do you want to sort of uh, quick go through kind of the chords yeah, and so speaking and playing and uh, for this tune so that the listener out there has got an idea? So this is an F add 9 to open the song up. It's played an octave higher. I'll ju do it low, but you should right. go, you know, to the uh, 13th fret. Right. But then we got a C chord. It's getting better all the time. Then we got a G chord done. Now it just drones on this. This is part of McCartney's desire to write a song that had one chord. You're holding it down, turning me around, filling me up with your rules. Now this is, I'm doing it, it's getting better, a little better, all the time again. Now notice when I go to the G, I'm not playing a standard G chord. I'm taking the third I have and I'm moving my finger over here which gives me an E note inside of the G which makes it a G6. And if you listen very closely, somebody is sticking that E in the chord. I don't know where it's coming from, but it adds uh, just a touch little little nice sauce on the on the okay. on the meal. So
it's interesting what comes up here. We have we start with the chorus, then we get loud truck noises in the background. <laughs> Uh, then we get a verse, and then we get a chorus and a verse, right? Um, but the verse, the, uh, the, the, the next chorus, the second chorus that comes up is extended, right? So we have uh, chorus, verse, extended chorus, no, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, verse, extended chorus. Then, this is really interesting, and I think it's Lennon's influence here. One guy speculated, one of the um, authors and the books I've been reading speculated that uh, Lennon actually contributed a lyric. I used to be uh, mean to my, I used to be cruel to my woman. I beat her and kept her apart from the things that she loved. Man, I was mean, but I'm changing my scene. Now, what's interesting about this is, I think Lennon must have been insistent that exact those exact lyrics be used because the structure of the melody changes. Now, this is another thing that hadn't been done before. We're in a verse. And they're changing the melody of the verse suddenly. We have two normal verses and then a, a, a melodic change. Because... Um, it says not a bridge or anything. This is a, another verse. It's a verse. verse. Okay. It's a verse section. So it's, um, let me see, like... Um, the, the, the regular verse melody is... Right? Everybody knows that. But the third verse goes... Used to be cruel to my woman apart from the things that she loved. Man, I was mean, but I'm changing my scene, and I'm doing the best that I can. Completely change the melody up. Then we go into the chorus. So in a way, it's almost a bridge. It's just that we're expecting a verse there, and it's a verse, but it ain't at the same time. Yeah, but think about the theme. All of a sudden, it becomes this kind of rather darker. Right, it becomes darker. And so it's this it's this sea change in, in, the, yes, indeed. in the theme. Good call. And you can hear it, this is when they open up, something called opening up, when the drummer like uh, reduces the amount of times he's hitting the drums making space. It's called opening up, okay. you know, you should open up over there is what you say to a drummer. But also they introduce the sitar at that moment, which gives it, you're exactly right, gives it a dark edge. And let's listen to it so you can okay. really hear it. So everything's happy, right? It's going along great. The bass is amazing in this. Alright, no longer. Let's, let's hear it earlier again. Right, the drums are happening there, right? There's a thing going on. Right? But when we get here, suddenly we have... Now, it goes over to bongo drums. It's very opened up now. Harrison with the sit part. They have beautiful three-part harmony. Excellent. Then they bring in the rhythm. And McCarthy with his octaves. Amazing. Highly, highly influenced. There's so much that's the Beach Boys on yeah, the record. Yeah, you could hear it in there. You could so hear it. Now, I'll ask another like dumb question. It was Harrison vocally, was he as important to yeah, the Beatles no, no, as, he, as he was on guitar? Yeah. I mean, they're doing the hoo-hoo-hoo, that's Lennon and Harris. Okay. You know, that's the thing. I mean, they were all equals when they started the band. Yeah, Harrison was younger, so they kind of treated him like the kid. And he did kind of get pushed aside a little, but in terms of the musical performance, he was just as as much there as everybody else in the oh, band. Oh, okay. You know? All right. Um, Good. By the way, just an aside about Ringo, uh, when as as de, uh, which uh, the White Album, it's interesting because somebody asked Ringo what he thought, what he thought, what was the recording process like, thinking that Ringo, you know, for Sgt. Pepper's, like, what was it like, you know, thinking that Ringo was going to be enthusiastic, and Ringo said. Well, I learned how to play chess on this session. <laughs> and the reason why, obviously, they did so much production work yeah. that, uh, that uh, you know, Ringo was bored to tears. He was happy with the White Album because, he, oh, we have a band again. Oh. You know, they worked as a group again. So, yeah, uh, so, uh, let's see. Also, one thing that should be noted, note the bass, the, the, this was a big deal back in the 60s, um, 
McCartney's bass became this very present force. You've talked in the about music. that. You've said that he actually sort of, uh, you know, in, in the same sense that maybe later on Jacques Pastorius was, whatever, but for singers in bands, singing yes. at the same time and all of this, he sort of laid some foundation that. And I think it was because. A a technological experiment they made opened them up to this idea. It, it changed the sound of the bass a little bit. Basically, what happens in the studio is you plug your instrument into an amplifier. They mic, they put a microphone on that, and that's what goes into the, the rec you know, that's what gets recorded through that mic. Mm -hmm. So whatever comes out of the amp, right? So you could tweak the tone of the amp and whatever. But what they tried, probably, probably even in a revolver, they plugged the bass direct into the the uh, the board. Oh. So there was no middleman, there was no amplifier. And that gave the, the bass this incredible presence suddenly. And McCartney must have loved it, this idea that like, okay, now the, the bass is outstanding as any other instrument in the group. I'm going to use my melodic brilliance to, to create, yeah. you know, these wonderful bass lines that are created. It's not just the tuba in a polka band. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, let's see if there's any other surprises in this side. There's an interesting thing in the background harmony. Get some closer the better. Next one. You know, a little dip. Oh. And it's almost like they, they when they... It's almost like they pushed the tape head for a second, or the magnetic yeah, tape. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or they did yeah. it consciously because they were messing around with a lot of these vocal experiments, yeah. you know. So that's it's getting better. It's a happy little tune. It's you know it's a, a great another great case of McCartney being sweet as candy, but Lennon kind of putting the edge on yeah. it, so it's not as dorky as it could be. Those lines still scan the same length, though, when Lennon was singing or his that his verse stuff. They still scan the same. He was just doing the melody differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably what happened was Lennon came up with the lyric, and, and they were both discussing it, and McCartney goes, geez, I, I love this the way this is, but it doesn't fit the melodic structure. And probably McCartney said, you know what? Let's make a new melody. What the hell, <laughs> you know? I mean, they were in that kind of mood. Everything was so experimental. Yeah, okay. So. All righty. <laughs>